tonight on World Football News. The World Cup countdown is on. Harry's back, but is he ready to go? A lot of speculation about your groin here today, to be honest. We'll also hear from Lucas. It's a massive grand finale in Spain. That was brilliant! A huge final round in Italy, too. The party is still going at Chelsea. And there's a boost for Australia's World Cup bid. Stick much. around and find out what it is on our final show of the season, World Football News. Welcome to World Football News. I'm Chris Bailey. Plenty coming your way in the next hour. We'll be speaking to Pim Verbeek shortly. And we have some exclusive news on next season's A-League fixtures. So stay tuned. Now, joining me tonight, my regular guest for the last 15 weeks, a man and I can now rely on to get us out of those sticky situations and to get us in some, David Drillich. <laughs> and alongside him, one of the Socceroos heroes from their 2006 World Cup campaign, the former AC Milan goalkeeper, Jelko Kalec. Welcome to the show, boys. Hi, Excellent. Chris. Excellent. Good to have you with us. Well, Harry Kuhl has given the clearest indication so far that he will get over his groin problem in time for the Socceroos opening World Cup match against Germany in just under a month's time. With the Socceroos World Cup training camp due to begin in just two days' time, the Aussie star is back on home turf as the build-up to the greatest show on earth begins. There's no doubting Harry Kuhl's popularity back in Australia. The Socceroos star mobbed in Melbourne this afternoon. It's excellent to see the fans here. You know, it's always great to come back home and, and see fans support us, which is uh, fantastic. Everywhere he goes, Kill keeps getting the same question. Can he shake off his groin injury and be fit for the World Cup? I was out early this morning. I was out early yesterday. We're doing all the right things uh, and, you know, nothing's pulling up sore, so it's all great. Despite recently going under the knife, Kill's not ruling himself out of next Monday's farewell game against New Zealand at the MCG. If things uh, progress you know, quicker, then maybe. But at the moment, we're sticking to a track and uh, it's not looking out of the picture. But it's the Socceroos meeting with Germany on June 14 that he's setting his sights on. And he wants to be 100% fit for that one. I think it's important that I am, um, not only for myself, but for my team as well. If I can't be 100%, then, you know, I'm only letting myself down and my team and, and certainly my country as well. Other members of Pim Verbeek's squad are also arriving in Melbourne. Craig Moore touching down last Friday to be part of Kevin Muscat's tribute game. Personally, I know that I've got, a, you know, quite a few doubters out there at the moment with my, with my age and I'm too slow and, and all those sort of things. But to be honest with you, I'm feeling, I'm feeling in good shape. Uh, I took the rest at the right time and uh, I'm determined to to go out, to, um, you know, because it will be my last tournament, but to go out in a way that um, I really want to go out in and, and do well. Life for the Socceroos is about to get a whole lot tougher. Four years ago, Gus hitting ran them ragged before the World Cup in Germany, and it paid off. More hard work needed if the Socceroos are going to compete with Germany, Ghana and Serbia. You need to put in the hard yards uh, to then go at and play at that level and be able to compete and you know we, we will I'm sure be prepared just as well uh, and hopefully uh, you know we, we're in a tough group again and as we were last time but our aim must must be to try and qualify through our group. Pim Verbeek named his 31-man squad last week the Dutchman turning his back on most of the A-League players in contention. For me no no real surprises I guess Maybe, maybe Spiranovic being left out of the squad and, and obviously you've had well, the three boys plus Simon Colosimo, I guess, that have been in Australia that, you know, possibly be a little bit disappointed to be left out. Defender Michael Beecham surprised to get a call-up after dropping off the radar while playing in the United Arab Emirates. Over the past month, I suppose, you know, things changed a lot. I started playing again and um, obviously that's, that's life and that's football. So, can the Socceroos make it into the round of 16? You might say the positives are uh, the experience the boys gained uh, in 06 it will hold them in good stead, but then you, you might say, well, you know, they're four years older, so, you know, we can keep going around in circles. But in all honesty, I think we've got a squad that's uh, going to be more than competitive. It's probably important to get off to a positive start. If we can get a, a result in the first game, it can really set you up. Um, it's difficult, but definitely doable to go through. You know, I'm going to go over to South Africa as well, and I'll be right behind the guys and, and wish them well, and hopefully they can 
go on to the next stage and maybe meet England. That's, that's what I'm hoping for, you know. That would be really good. I've heard reports from Ghana, I've heard reports from Serbia and obviously Germany as well. They're all sitting up there on their uh, high horses. But look, again, we proved people wrong once before. So uh, we're, we're confident enough to go out there and play good football. Adam McNichol, World Football News. Well, as we heard there, Harry Kuehl wasn't keen to rule himself out of next week's match against New Zealand. But Adam McNichol caught up with Pim Verbeek a short time ago. And here's what the Socceroos coach had to say. He will not be fit, not ready enough for the New Zealand game. That's, uh, I can say, oh, of course, he will try, but it's not, he's not fit, fit enough. But in the end, we make him fit for the World Cup. That's the most important. Uh, as far as I know, at the moment, he's the only player that probably cannot make the New Zealand game. So that looks good. That means I have a lot of players to choose out and they all want to play the game. They all want to play in the, in the MCG, of course. Um, yeah, it's OK. So except Harry, everybody's there. Is it possible for players to actually win their way into the final squad with a good performance against New Zealand and in the camp? Yeah, it's exactly what you said. It's not only about the game, it's about the upcoming uh, five, six days in the training camp. So what I've said already, a lot of them are training. They do some training sessions, special training sessions. To, uh, to be fit and to be ready for the camp and um, then they have six, seven days to show themselves because I have to leave a few players in Australia before we go to South Africa and then I have another five, six days to select the final 23. So, tough job. I remember in 2006 when uh, Gus Hiddink was the Socceroos coach, he really trained the players very hard in the lead up to the World Cup. Are you going to uh, train them hard also? Ah, that is the plan always because it's, it's a tough tournament. There's no time during the tournament to do any physical training sessions anymore. But we should not forget that we are going to a different, totally different country. We go to South Africa, which is uh, altitude. Um, it will take around four or five days to get used to the totally different climate. And then we are ready and we go for it. How much does the game against New Zealand matter? Is it more about um, tactics and preparation or is it actually still a bit about the result? It's always, always about the result. You know the players, you know Australian mentality better than I do. Uh, the moment they're on the field, they want to win. If they go on the training field, they want to win. So we always try to win the game. Um, but in the end, in the back of their head, of course, there's for both teams, of course, the situation that they don't want to get injured or injure another player. Um, but it's about winning. It's about showing themselves to the fans, to the media, to everybody, and especially also to show them to, towards me because I'm the one who takes the decisions. And Socceroos fans, I suppose, are a bit nervous. We, we all realise we're in a very tough group. What's the message you can give, the message of hope for the Socceroos fans? Well, we all agree that we, have, that we are in a tough group, but as far as I know, my players, and I spoke with all of them of already, they're very excited about the group. They see it as a big challenge, and they will do everything to go to the final 16, and then everything to go to the final eight, and so on and so on. So it is never about the team spirit. It's never about the, uh, the attitude of the players. They will, do, they will give everything to go to the next round. And just finally, I, I saw that you were quoted in Alpha magazine saying that we can't win the World Cup. But how far can we go? Ah, look, it's unrealistic to say you can win the World Cup because that's... Uh, that, it, it's, so, you know, you know we better at the moment. I don't want to make uh, fairy tales or talk, or talk about fairy tales. I think we can do a job. You need a little bit of luck, like you had. You didn't have that luck in uh, 2006. So hopefully we have the luck now in 2010 to go to the sort of final 16. And then it depends on quality, fitness of the players, referee, opponent. Uh, that makes it exciting. So the moment you're in the final 16, everything is possible. We did it in South Korea. There are always examples of teams who can do uh, out of the blue, do something special. And let's hope we're one of those teams this time. Pimper Bake speaking to Adam McNichol there. Uh, interesting thoughts at the end there about we can't win the World Cup. He doesn't want to talk about fairy tales. Uh, is that the type of thing you'd want to be hearing from your manager pre-championship? You yeah, know, look, I've been hearing a lot of people asking, can we win the World Cup? Look, it's unrealistic to even be talking about that. We've got a big group. Uh, the, the, we should be setting our sights and but getting out of this group. you've got to be in it to win it, have you not? Yeah, I mean, you are. You're you not are. You're just going there to turn up and make numbers. Yeah, you, you are. But you can't win. It's, okay. it's, <laughs> we can't win the World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> it's, look, a lot of people want to say, can we win it? And you want to hear it. Yes, we can. But look, the reality is we're not going to win the World Cup. We need mm. to get out of the group, which is a massive challenge. And then from there, uh, if we can go another game after that, that would be fantastic. You know, but to say that we're going to win it, I don't think that's been realistic at all.